Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to um, the joint hearing with the Hawaiian Affairs and Energy Economic Development Tourism Committees. Um, I am Senator Miley Shimabukuro, Chair of the Hawaiian Affairs Committee. Other members of our committee is Vice Chair Senator Favela. We also have members Ihara, Kyoho Kalole, and Richards. This hearing is being streamed live on YouTube. You can find links to viewing options for all Senate hearings and meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website. If you're interested in seeing the written testimony, go to capital.hawaii.gov. In the unlikely event that we must abruptly end this hearing due to major technical difficulties, the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business and a public notice will be posted. For those testifying remotely, all your audio will be muted and video disabled until it's your turn to testify. As is our practice, there's a two minute time limit per testifier. If there are temporary technical glitches during your turn, we may have to move on to the next person and we appreciate your understanding and remind you that the committee has already received your written testimony. And members, please wait to ask your questions for the testifiers until we have gone through all the testifiers for that measure. And I'll pass to Chair DeCoit if you want to introduce your committee. I, uh, thank you, uh, Chair Energy, Economic Development and Tourism. Uh, myself, uh, Senator Lynn DeCoit, my Vice Chair, Senator Ken Mackay. Uh, missing in action is Senator Kim, Senator Favela, and Senator Kara Fukumata. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. We just have one measure on our agenda. It's SB 2650. Appropriates monies for the continued exploration and identification of geothermal resources on um, Hawaiian homelands. And so first we have DHHL in support. Thank you so much, Debbie. Um, next we have the Hawaii State Energy Office in support. Thank you so much. Uh, Hawaiian Electric in support. Hi, good afternoon. Um, afternoon. Rachel McCaw, Hawaiian Electric um, in support. Did you want to proceed or are you just going to stand on your testimony? Um, stand on your testimony in general support okay. of the intent of the bill. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Hiko. Um, Sustainable Energy Hawaii in support. And we have Ulupono Initiative in support. Over here on Zoom. Uh, Naivi Kupuna, opposition. Ho Monopono LLC in support. Uh, we have Keith Neal, support. Lou Fabrito, support. Tamara um, Halton, opposition. Cindy Freitas, in opposition. Um, and these are all in support. Stanley Osterman, Kevin Kelly, Dylan Armstrong, Makai Freitas, Alice Kim, Peter Sternlich, and then, uh, and, and then Kilihea Inaba, opposition. Um, Wayala on opposition. I think that's all the testimony we have written. Is there anybody else here for SB 2650? If you see none members, any questions? No? Okay. Um, let's see. Do we have, oh wait, I don't, I don't have quorum. Okay. Um, but I, I'm ready to go into decision making without a recess if that's okay with EET. Is that okay with you? Okay, okay. And then we can we can defer our decision. So you know, I'm I'm ready to um, pass this measure as is. There's no technical amendments that I saw from but in the committee report we can note the concerns of the opponents. Any discussion? The, discussion? Do you have the practice where you have to take out the appropriation and you put the oh, six million dollars into the committee report? Very good. Thank you very much for Donovan will thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> Let, let's let's pass with amendments and let's yeah, let's just take the appropriation out, uh, leave a blank appropriation, but we will note the the money's being requested in the committee report. And then also summarize the concerns of the opponents in the committee report. Any other suggestions or discussion, members? Okay. Um, and then so if EET wants to take your vote, you can go ahead first. So, pass with amendments. Okay. Um, Energy, Economic, Development, Tourism, uh, passing uh, SB 2650 with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes yes. Senator Fukunaga. Aye. Senator okay. Kim. Aye. Senator Favela. Is excused, Chair. Your recommendation is adopted. Thank okay, you. thank you. And for Hawaiian Affairs, we're going to defer decision making till our 115 agenda, which is today, February 8th, and then 224. We are adjourned. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to the 115 agenda. This is the Joint Committees on Hawaiian Affairs and Water and Land. And I'll just go right into it since I previously read the script with the uh, 
kind of technical housekeeping issues. Um, so we're going to start with SB 2589. This increases the penalty for the desecration of a Hawaiian and non-Hawaiian burial sites from a misdemeanor to a felony. So first we have um, DLNR with comments. Thank you, Director. Next, we have the Maui Lanai Island Burial Council with comments. Let's see, and then we have um, OHA in support. Yes, I'm here. Uh, yes. Thank you so much. Stand in support. Society for Hawaiian Archaeology in support. Uh, Pacific Rim Land Company, opposition. Lou Fabrito in support. These are all in support. Julia Estegoy Kaho'one, Tamara Ampalton, Josephine Tanimoto, Hana Ane, uh, Rona Ikehara Kabal, uh, and then this uh, Keo Mailani Hanapi Hirata with comments. Okay. Um, Wainani Traub, support. Kilihea Inaba, support. Peter Mills, support. Anyone else here for SB 2589? Any members, any questions? Just for, oh, yeah. Just, Vice Chair Favela. Just a quick clarification. Uh, question that I have is this bill pertaining to the International Act, and uh, is it going to be all? Like, if they intentionally or unintentionally disturbed it, is it going to be all together, or, or is it going to be, uh, how is it going to be enforced? I, I would say, you know, Right off the top of my head, I, I should. I'm Alan Down. I'm the administrator of SHPD. Back up here. I'm getting getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think in, somebody who does it accidentally should not be a felon. So I mean, we'll have to figure that out. But uh, you know, I mean, I think somebody who does this um, either intentionally or you know is otherwise violating the law when they yeah. do it. That they yes, I think they that's a different category of thing. The reason why I'm saying this is um, I like this bill because um, it finally we're going to start getting bites because the desecration has been happening too long. So appreciate it. Thank you for the clarification. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Other other questions? Yes, Chair. You know yes, um, Dr. Donald. Thanks again um, for being here. There was an incident um, in my district before I was redistricted to Senate District 1 in Hilo, but I was um, the senator for District 4 that included North Kohala up until last year. Um, Mo'okini Heiau in North Kohala. Mm -hmm. There was a concrete um, sign, well, the signs for the Heiau was embedded in a concrete base. Uh, twice it was damaged. The last incident, unfortunately, the person who took the frame, which was of wood, actually dismantled the sign from the concrete base. Um, it was pretty horrible to see the pictures that was sent to me as well. And I believe that Mo'okini Heiau, isn't that um, part of our national uh, recognition as well? That particular Heiau? I believe it is. Yes. yes. And so there was a recognition on the sign that was so different from our other Heiaus because this is recognized um, nationally. And so uh, weeks went by and um, of course the internet and the websites were rolling pretty heavy. Uh, throughout the week. Um, I was just kind of curious. All of, then all of a sudden, the sign was returned. So, but interesting. <laughs> and we kind of talked about, um, well, my concern, um, the area is um, well known for Department of Education and our charter schools. 
there's a lot of visits, including neighbor island schools that go to visit Mo'okini Heiau. And if some of you have not been there, it's pretty, pretty nice. Um, however, uh, very historical. Um, nonetheless, we're thinking about other means, how we're going to, you know, try to address, you know, thefts as well. Now, then we're talking about cameras, but I think really when you look at historical sites and our, the cultural sites, you really don't want to put too, too many things out there, I guess, you know, that's not uh, pretty um, nice to have. Right. Um, so what can we do when addressing these issues about policing? areas that are out there because most of our cultural sites we don't have security i mean we can't afford security in many of the areas so that's a very good question and i wish i had a really good answer for you okay um, well maybe some i don't want to belabor yeah. the issue so maybe let's consider like how can we monitor um you know things of that nature because you don't want to desecrate the region sure. or any area that has the hills and historical places as well so you know let's um here if you don't mind yeah. maybe take it upon ourselves as well mm -hmm. work on something for you know the future and talk about it and with oha Hawaiian homelands you know let's let's all put our heads together of how we can continue to maybe um see how we can support these non -ac these activities that are desecrating our areas okay thank you thank something you. for you folks actually you want to stay you want to stay there any okay. other questions though <laughs> You might as well stay because the next bill we're going to move on is SB 2590. This requires DLNR to amend the definition of inadvertent discovery and previously identified in the HARs. And first up is DLNR with comments, I believe. Yes, the department stands on its written comments. Okay, thank you so much. Um, next, we have the Maui Lanai Island Burial Council in opposition. We have a couple of them, yeah, in opposition Michelle Ho'opiki, DEN, and also Vernon. And uh, Everett Dowling, all in opposition from the Maui Lanai Island Barrel Council. And uh, Oha, in support? Yes, uh, we're in support. Uh, Did you want to come forward? Yeah, yes, I think it's coming forward. Yeah, yeah. Nathan? Yeah. <laughs> Up to you, you stay over there. Aloha, Chair. Aloha, Aloha. thank you. But members of the committee, um, as stated in our testimony, uh, you'll see that um, two sessions ago, there were two resolutions that called for a burial sites working group or uh, has convened that group and although we missed our target deadline of the of 2023 we're here this year uh, a lot of the work was volunteer work and it was an overwhelming amount of testimony but we did uh, finish complete the burial sites working group report and the recommendation that's in this in this measure comes directly out of that report and so we are supporting it we believe that this will minimize some misunderstandings and longstanding cases that have ended up in litigation. I mean, when you have two sets of EV, one that was previously identified doing an archaeological survey, and then one that's found later during construction, and giving them two different classifications, we don't believe that's like in line with the intent of the law. A lot of the folks that were on the burial sites working group were around when the rules were created and when the statutes were put into place for 6E, there's a lot of knowledgeable individuals on there, and we don't believe that uh, the law is being carried out uh, the way it was originally intended. So that's why we're in strong support of a lot of these measures that are before you guys today. Thank you so much. Appreciate your testimony. Um, next, we have um, Pacific Rim Land Company in opposition, and we have, um, these are all in support. Um, Bianca Yasaki, Cindy Freitas, um, Hannah Anai, Rona Ikehara Kebral, and Oda Foster Ampong is opposition, and Keo Mailani Hanafi Hirata is with comments. Anyone else here for SB 2590? Okay, oh yes, please come forward. Did you want to come forward? Aloha. So, yeah, yes. Aloha. Aloha. Um, aloha ina hako. My name is Keo Mailani Hanafi Hirata. I come from the island of Molokai. Oh, Mahalo. Aloha. Um, so I wanted to kind of give comments, but also give testimony. So I'm a Keikyo Kaina of Molokai. Um, my family can trace their genealogy to time immemorial. Um, I come from the east end of Molokai, where predominantly we're made up of Kuleana landowners. So um, I am testifying here um, in support of this. On the island of Molokai, we get no support from the State Historic <coughs> Preservation Division. 
And so when I mean no support, they never come there. We have so many multiple open cases. Molokai is part of Maui Nui. And so that's four of our major islands. We have one burial site specialist to manage four islands. We have one cultural historian to manage four islands. Um, we have one archaeologist up to recently, the lead archaeologist for Maui Nui, um, Andrew McAllister. He lives on the U.S. continent. He can never come to Molokai when we need him to. Um, we do have an assigned archaeologist. Um, he lives on Mokuokiawe and he is very Maikai. Um, he comes when he can. And so um, in this particular case, we have a couple cases on the island where cases, one of them has been open for over 33 years. From what I was told, it was one of the first cases that came up after the burial councils were developed um, at the state level. That case hasn't been able to be mihied yet. Um, there still hasn't been a burial treatment plan in place. The land has been allowed to be sold four times for different landowners. Now we are, it's in the hands of Maui County and we are hoping that we can come up with a plan. But on that particular land parcel, when it happened back in the early 1990s, the desecration, it was an intentional desecration. The landowner back then um, was prosecuted and found guilty. The heavy machinery pushed the EV and scattered it over eight acres, hundreds of our pupunas. And so now, fast forward 33 years later, um, throughout the different landowners that came about, they all wanted to develop at some point. And then when they were shut down and they couldn't, um, they kind of just sold the lands. But during those times, they would have different studies, archeology span studies come in. They would try to do some type of ground disturbance and every time new EV came up. But every time the EV came up, it was an inadvertent discovery. Instead of just saying, we know what happened, and we know that throughout these eight acres, this heavy machinery intentionally through the landowner ground, would grind up our pupunas and our tutus and scatter them around. So it should never have to, that whole eight acres should just say anything that's found there is not an inadvertent discovery. Just say what Oha said. You cannot have two separate. Um, that's not, there's another case that just came up um, a few months ago and a disturbance on the west side of our island where we know that there is ancient burials there. And um, most recently, the previous history and culture branch um, chief had um, sent an email that says that any of the kupunas that they find there is considered inadvertent. And they shouldn't be because we know that that is an ancient burial site. We who come from the island knows. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it creates a problem for us. Please so, summarize it. Yeah, but anyway, um, I just wanted to share that. So, mahalo. Thank you so much for coming so far. Yes, yes thank Justify. you. We appreciate mahalo. you. Mahalo. Mahalo. Anyone else so far? Well, uh, anyone else? Uh, SB 2590, any other testifiers? Seeing on the advice here for Bella? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, to follow it yeah. Back yeah. Keo Mailani. Oh. Very good. <laughs> With um, all the documentation and how much acres is this property? On the east end, the first property I mentioned yes. is eight acres. So in 32 years, um, Oha, Hawaiian Homes, nobody ever thought to buy the land three times before that to preserve it. Did you ever guys ever look into that? So this land case happened and I was a teenager in mm -hmm. high school. The person who was the deputy attorney general at that time was Chair Don Chang. Um, Predominantly, like I said, on the east end, we made up of Kuliana landowners. So that land parcel was part of Kuliana lands. So I do know that over the past 33 years, everybody tried to kokua at some point. It took the efforts of our people on Molokai to really push the issue and the county of Maui bought it. But it sits in the inventory of the mayor. So whoever is the sitting mayor makes the decision on that land parcel. And now we have a mayor who really wants to work with us and make this happen. So they have just last year expensed funds um, along with the approval of the county council to help put our tutus and kupunas to rest, come up on burial plan, um, hire consultants to make it happen and work with the recognized descendants. So, Thank yes. you. 
That's what I wanted to know. Okay. Yes. Mahalo. Other questions? Did you have nope. questions? Senator Ihara? Um, I wonder if we can get comments about the bill that you're thinking of, uh, Senate Bill 2438, which is radically different. On this bill. Yeah, you know that one. I'm not. I'm going to defer. I'm going to defer these till Tuesday. Okay. I'm going to give yeah right. more okay. consideration of what or okay. what to do with okay. all the opposition then, and support. Okay. So then I'll ask the question. Yeah. Can I ask the question then on oh, yeah, this sure. bill? Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Um, so for I think Oha is supporting this bill, yeah. Yes. Sure. Uh, could I ask a question? A legal question, actually. Why don't you just come up? So the governor, I believe the governor um, has to approve all of the um, administrative rules, right? Uh, well, ultimately, yes, there's a rulemaking process that needs to occur. And the governor finally has a final decision maker on that. I mean, a rule cannot go into effect unless the governor signs yes, okay. it. So, so I mean, this, yeah. this bill just requires the, the administrative rules to be amended. But it doesn't require the governor could just not sign it. So it seems that it's it's not a complete. It doesn't take you all the way to the objective. <clears throat> That's right? correct, sir. I mean, the oh, I had similar questions about this, but it's still not a reason not to support it. Uh, if it's going to encourage a rule change, we believe it, it could be effective ultimately. Well, but it's like really the governor's call, right? If, if I may. Yeah. Um, my view would be that if this becomes law, the governor has to sign the law. After all, yes, right? The, uh, you know, my view would be that, that the governor doesn't have the option to not make that amendment to the, when the rule is amended. If he signs the bill, the statute he, the mm. statute requires that change in the definition. So, if right? The, right. So the governor's yeah. veto or not veto will determine whether he would he could still uh, not sign because it doesn't require him to sign um, the the administrative rule changes. All it does is require the department to, to, to make the rule changes. Uh, I, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not even going to play attorney general here. Right, so that's why <laughs> it's, it's really a question for them. But my view would be, listen, the, if, if the legislature changes the definition and says, here's the definition, that we would have no alternative, well, yeah, but, and, yeah. and I believe the governor would have no alternative well, but to this, sign. This, the, we cannot do it by ourselves. The governor has to either approve or let it become law. Yes. So, so we're, we're only we're the creators, but we're not the um, final decision makers unless we over, yeah. override. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think. Well, yes, you're right. But I mean, I think if the governor signs the well, law. Yeah. So we're talking about politics. So let's yeah. not talk about politics at this point. I want right. to have a question about legal. So if we could get, if if you're going to go down this road. Mm. Uh, with the current language that allows that just uh, that requires a department to change the rule but does not require the governor to approve it mm. so if we could just get if you want to go down that way if we could use that time to at least get the ag to mm. uh, indicate mm. Mm. Okay. Um, because this governor could sign it and then obligate politically not legally but politically obligated to sign um, but it, it continues the, the political question about for other governors who did not sign. So mm. that that's um, it, you know it's a, it's a good short term, good shot in the arm attempt. Um, I'm interested in um, some sustainable solutions rather than just one off. Anyway, that's my two cents. Yeah, yeah, it's a tough, tough one. Yeah, I think I think for me the, the hesitation is the opposition from various members of the burial councils. Um, so yeah, so I am considering whether we should look at this other bill, SB two four three eight, which talks about um, kind of more mandating more um, more uh, prosecu prosecution by the BLNR uh, for violators of these types of rules. So, but that measure possibly. is not on today's agenda. Yeah, it would be a. Okay. replacing the contents with that so okay yeah. other questions have a question um, question for oha um, and we we thank you um we thank oha um because though our joint resolution the resolution was not passed to create the task force but you took it upon yourselves to uh, conduct um at least uh, a, a a hearing or an organization or task force to look at this issue. Did you include other uh, people within um, that particular task force? 
um, to participate in the work that you did? Or was it only OHA's personnel? No, it was, it was mostly driven by uh, ex external parties. Oh, okay. OHA was mainly convening it. I oh, mean, okay. the chair was Malia Kutagawa, who's a professor. Okay, so there were uh, there were people in the community that were members. And also a lot of members, a lot of chairs from the burial council. The reason I ask council. is, why is there a position that's why? Because if you had a task force, you guys were working on mm -hmm. it, and people knew that this issue was so important. I'm just curious why there's opposition. There's some new members uh, on the burial councils that weren't on previously when we convened the task force okay. that have competing interests as All well. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It, it's just a matter of sharing because there's so many measures before our committees with regards to burial sites. Yeah. You know, and yeah. Dr. Downer can tell us <laughs> about that because he's attended all of the hearings. Okay. Thank, thank you. you so much. But thank you to OHA too for conducting a task force hearing. Appreciate that. Yeah. Absent of the legislature's approvals. Other questions? We're, yeah. we're happy you yeah. did it. Thank you. Other questions, members, about SB 2590? Let's move on then. SB 2591. This allows individuals and Ohana members to access burial sites on privately owned land to identify, monitor, and record burial sites or conduct cultural practices. And so first up is DLNR. Department stands on its written comments. Okay. Next, we have the um, Maui Lanai Island Burial Council member. Um, we have three in opposition, Michelle Ho'opi'i, Everett Dowling, and Vernon. Um, and we have OHA in support. Yeah, again, uh, we stand yeah. by for uh, our testimony and support. Uh, there's been many instances where we'll go on SHP has issued letters to private landowners uh, trying to allow access for living descendants. And it's, it's not granted, and we believe that this, this change will Thank you. Pacific Rim Land Company opposition. Uh, and then these are all in support. Lou Fabrito, Julia Estigoy One, Bianca Isaki, Cindy Freitas, Anai, Han Hannah Anai, Kioni Shizuma, Tamara P Palton, Rona Ikehara Kirbal, Foster Ampong, um, Kilihea Inaba, and then we have Keo Mailani Hanapi Hirata with comments. Did you want to testify? Please, thank you. Aloha, Ina Kako, Jason, FYI. I will testify on all of everything on the agenda. Okay, sure. So, uh, first of all, um, my name is Keo Mailani Hanapi Hirata. I come from the island of Molokai. So, um, I want to read you guys something. On page 376 of the Ruling Chiefs of Hawaii, written by our greatest Native Hawaiian historian that ever lived, Samuel Kamakau, in quotations. In old days, the inheritance of the family burial place, the caves and the secret burial places of our ancestors was handed down from these to their descendants without the intrusion of a single stranger, unless by consent of the descendant so that wherever a death occurred, the body was conveyed to its inheritance. These immovable barriers belong to burial rights for all time. Um, also on page 376 of the Ruling Chiefs of Hawaii, um, Samuel Kamakau, in quotations, the rule of kings and chiefs and their land agents might change, but the burial rights of families survived on their lands. Anyone who has ever gone to school and studied about native our history, our Hawaiian history, has knows who Samuel Kamakau is and the importance of who he was and what he documented for us as the native people of Hawaii. So um, for this bill, I am in support of SB 2591. Even though lands in Hawaii are sold over and over again, if there are burial sites on those lands, the recognized descendants have an ancestral kuleana to malama their ivi kupuna, should they choose to, free from any stranger telling them they are not able to. Our tutus and kupunas had no idea what the future would hold. All they knew was that their ibi would go back into the aina of their inheritance to feed the next generation their mana. Um, I do have a slight comment about the way it's written in the language here. Um, there is a part that talks about lineal or cultural descendant. Before that, it should say recognized lineal or cultural descendants. And I believe that's on line 7, 15, and 4. But mahalo. Mahalo. 
Thank you. Anyone else here for SB 2591? Seeing none, members, any questions? Uh, Vice Chair Novella? Oh, well, go ahead, go ahead, no. No, no, you first. Oh, okay, okay. How does the LNR confirm members having legitimate connection to the site? So, well, uh, DLNR does not. The, the designation of descendancy, the recognition of descendancy is done by the burial councils. In our only role in that, there is a process of, of applying. We review the application to make sure it's complete. And once we think it's complete, we'll, you know, we give it to the burial council for a decision. But the decision to recognize dissent is entirely the burial council's. Okay, so the next one is what you're saying. So there is any specific documents or process, etc., that, that we can let people know. How does how is, how is it? You guys have the documents. How do you go about getting the documents? Because that's where the confusion come in. Because pretty much anybody with Hawaiian blood, right? I give you an example. Yeah. Somewhere in my community, I don't want to go there. <laughs> Somewhere in the West Side, people put claims to bones to developers, homeowners, previous homeowners, previous development, and current. They put claims on it, and there's no barrier council or nothing like that. But uh, hypothetically, they say that anybody that is Hawaiian can put claims to the bones. I, I just like a correction on that because. Um, if there's no, um, if we cannot have somebody going to any barrier council approval, how, how, how are we going to be able to get these these documents? I mean, how is the, how, how how the process the, we're going to make? How is documents? the applicant going to get it? Yeah. So it's on our website. It's on your website. Yeah. So they, they can get it from our website and fill out the forms and submit it to us. And then we'll, we'll review it when we, you know, if we need, if we think we need more information, we'll ask for it. Once we think the application is complete, we'll we'll give it to the you know we'll put it on a barrel council agenda for decision making. Okay, so you must have seen my third question. How will the LNR enforce who is the legitimate individuals that can enter in here? Already can answer that question. Okay, thank you, Chair. Okay. Senator McKelvey. Yeah, I guess Aloha. Mm -hmm. From the from the get go, let me let you know I support you know, support the bill but you know obviously when you do these things you got to think about the real world and one of it would be of course liability for people coming on the land you know accessing private land whether it be the descendants the landowners and if there's an injury or a harm or a damage or something happens where was the liability lies is, is the liability on the landowner is the state now in doing this going to be the entity that's going to I guess um, indemnify either either party who is accessing I mean that how would that issue play into the bill i mean at all potentially that, that's a fair question because in the past oil has encouraged uh, liability waivers for, for these landowners mm -hmm. um, i'm not trying to say like that should be a requirement um but the issue has come up and that has been our our stance on, on the matter yeah because then you know descendant comes on the land and they get hurt and you know they you get an attorney right but for medical costs and damages etc then you know what i'm saying is that there's a landowner now is going to have to defend the suit and the word go so i mean anyway i just think it's a consider it's consideration the conversation goes forward and if there's something happens in an incident you know who bears the legal responsibility and does the state bear the legal responsibility too so that's all yeah, thank you thank you other questions so you know? so does oh. know about maybe like when uh idea of how much of these burials is on do you have an inventory of how much of the burials are probably on top of private property we we don't we don't have that that inventory um but i would say though a majority of the the private landowners are when there's recognized descendants they have been amiable to access but there are a few problem private landowners hmm. yeah the only reason why in Kauai we get that zucker guy whatever his name <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of land, so you know, I'll forget over there for because he actually called Kauai police when people went over there to pray and recognize the kupuna. He called the cops on them. So again, how how we how we can get on there where it's known he knows to to get access to their to the burial site. So it's both ways, right? 
if the owner knows, they can show proof to the owner, and the owner knows that, how we can make the owner let them come on there and <clears throat> to visit there or do whatever they need to do on that site because then that's the click on his site on that because I give you an example. My sister had Hawaiian, my sister has Hawaiian homes in Maui. Had one, uh, Evie, Hawaiian homes gave her, I mean, nobody in Hawaiian homes, but her parcel had an Evie, okay? So she, she accepted it because she wanted Hawaiian homes. Now somebody went over there and desecrated, took the stones, kicked it all around. The neighbor, right? But guess who got the fine? My sister. See what I mean? So that's the kind of stuff I'm asking because we like know, because there's no way knowing kids, because they're kids, knowing, but then the fine came through Hawaiian Homes and the burial council to my sister, who was living in one shack at the time. And that was sad. So that's the kind of questions that we need to know. Rich versus poor, have and have nots, how we can go over there and pay respects to our kupuna. Thank you. Can, can I yeah. add? Yes, so, sir, if it's supposed to go the way it's supposed to go, usually when burials are registered, they're supposed to be recorded with the Bureau of Conveyances, but often that doesn't that happen. Yes. And, yeah. and then there's a debate about why Why didn't the next landowner know? Right? Yes. And so the other landowner maybe didn't pass it on. So sometimes that creates a problem. Yes. But like I was saying, though, usually we run into situations when there's recognized descendants, landowners that learn about it afterwards are okay, but sometimes there's problem landowners that don't want to allow access. Oh, okay. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Chair. Chair Noy? Yes. Can I, um, for the discussion, matter of fact, I was going to bring up the, a question as well, and perhaps our two attorneys on this committee um, can a answer as well. You know, um, do we have, and Dr. Downing, any of lands that are sold um, in real estate, as an example, does it cover anything of a covenant with regards to um, uh, our lands that are like maybe from beyond 1900 or whatever? And what I'm getting at is because we know lands are so being sold often and many are newcomers. Mm -hmm. And um, so mm -hmm. having that said, you know, when there's real estate sales on properties, you know, there are some areas that we identify that the buyer understands there's cookie frogs and other yeah. things that's there. And I'm just wondering how we can recognize people who are purchasing properties that these issues with regards to the Hawaiian islands, you know, it, our EVs can be all over the place, yeah. anywhere. And like I mentioned about Kailua uh, in Kona, where there's, they're all over the place. And so um, do we have anything with, you know, when somebody files, uh, they want to purchase no, the land, that's, that's landowners, the and then there's a challenge to the Hawaiian families, the Ohana, you know, when you see the, the, the challenges and all our, our kupuna and our ohanas are listed as the owners originally on that property, mm -hmm. but then it's cleared and the quiet purchaser, title. what do you, yeah, quiet, quiet, title. quiet, quiet title. title. So mm. maybe we should consider doing a measure, I think legally, that they have to include when they buy properties, that this particular property must be recognized because our Hawaiian islands are so different from the US, US states in our country. And so we have precious lands and all these issues that we have before us. Um, it's just like every, every year we go through this. Yep. And so, you know, um, we hope that maybe we can have our minds together, come up with a resolution for us to do a bill in the coming years that we try to work with realtors and uh, because again, like I say, our lands are being picked up <coughs> and it's changing. Landowners are changing every year. So anyway, I just want to bring that up because it's something that we should consider. Senator, yeah. yeah well, Senator Yohara. I guess a fact first fact question, I, I assume um, there are, when you sell a house, a property you have to disclose certain things now right and i assume that a burial site is not a requirement if it's not a requirement not, no. then maybe um because we've had no. past legislation that would require um a 
you know, disclosure. Uh, right. Yeah. Mm. It's something for the communities yeah. to work on, mm. you know, for yeah, future. If I could just comment. I mean, yes, you know, as Kamakana said, these, you know, when a burial is identified, that's supposed to be registered with the Bureau of Conveyances. And okay. my, you know, I'm not a lawyer, I'm an archeologist. Um, my, my position would be that that is an encumbrance on the land and it runs with the land and it's something that the landowners, you know, that, that, you know, that should be show up on the title search when they do that. We do not have the resources to go check to make sure that that registration occurs. And, you know, there are times when, you know, when it's a big enough project or it's a, sorry, but controversial enough where we actually do that, but we can't do it every time. We just don't have the resources. Hmm. That's, that's something then I would read that our committees should work on. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I just I want to add that Dr. Downey, we, in another Waterland yeah, hearings yeah. as well with regards to burial sites and questions were, were a bit, I mean, that came up similarly to what we're doing now, but, um, but you know, he's committed and he did say that as well, when we need to relocate EVs, um, you know, uh, and a good point that he did mention was, oh yes, that's allowable, but we always have to make sure that on the relocation, and I understand the burial council has accepted that as well, Ohana's have, but let's make sure that those burial sites are within the area. So, you know, uh, that you're not gonna move, you know, the EV site from Kailua Kona to Waimea or Hilo. That, and, and he was specific with regards to to making sure we address that kind of stuff with the movements of, of a an EV area, particularly with, with sea, sea level rise, we're going to see a lot more, yeah. I'm sure. And so, just um, you know, want to reiterate that it was a good discussion. Um, that this will happen, and the agency would support us. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Just, just sorry, sorry, Chair. Yeah. Brought to my. Yeah. Even though the discover and in in our bush we found. And the person was of royalty. They they had abstracted because it was being from the waves, and we would have lost the EV into the ocean. But also, when you extract our kupuna, our family, there needs a timetable of them to be replaced when I replace. We locate in like how Senator Inouye said, but it should be done in a timely manner. You guys know, especially archaeologists know. We have some Hawaiian bones been sitting in warehouses for decades, you know? So that's another thing, Chair, that we should look into. If you discover bones, whether you find it on your property or not, city, state, or government, whatever government, that when they extract them for whatever reason, that we need to put them back to rest in a timely manner. And I would be appreciative because that's the issue we have on um, West Maui. Yeah some of the EVs. Thank you. Senator Elefante? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Question for, is it Mr. Ferrero? Yes. Yeah, sir. from OHA. So in your testimony, you mentioned that, you know, too often OHA has seen this request denied. Um, what is that number on often, like in terms of individuals reaching out to OHA? Regarding burial access issues? Yes. Uh, I'm just... Maybe about ten per year. Okay, mm. that's that's good to know. Yeah, mm. thank you. Mm. Okay, thank you. And I have just one follow-up question too. I mean, what if we considered imposing fines on private landowners who failed to disclose and record with bureau conveyances yeah. burial sites that they knew or should have known existed? Would that be helpful? I mean, I I think anything we can do that will ensure that you know that there is an incentive to record the burial as the law requires would be a great thing. Now, whether or not that's legal is a question for the AG. Mm. Um, but, you know, and, and but I certainly, you know, just off the top of my head, I would, I would be fine with it. Okay. okay, okay, good. Okay, any other questions? Okay, you might as well both just stay because for the next one, I'll call on you both since you're already here. So the next bill, SB 2592, requires DLNR to amend the definition of cultural descendant to more accurately capture relationships. Uh, so DLNR, first with comments. We stand on our written comments. Oh, huh? uh, yes, we stand on our comments in support. I think in practice, the burial councils have been recognizing descendants to the most <coughs> anyway, and so this would just codify some of that. In rules. Okay, very good. Um, next, we have three members of the Maui Lanai Island Burial Council 
Um, all in opposition, Michelle Ho'opi'i, Everett Dowling, and Vernon. Um, Pacific Rim Land Company in opposition, uh, Lou Favorito, support. These are all in support. Cindy Freitas, Hannah Anai, Rona Ikehara Kebral, and, um, and Kil Mailani, Hanafi Hirata. And then Foster Ompong is in opposition. Did you want to test? Okay, yeah, so if you can make a seat for Kil Mailani. Thank you so much again for coming. Yeah, or you guys can, you can leave. You don't have to stay, up to you. We'll call you back. Oh. Okay. Aloha, So my name is Kel Mailani Hanapi Hirata. Um, I want to give testimony for SB 2592. Um, I'm not going to say if I'm in support or, oppo or be in opposition. But um, in all cultures and religions around the world, land always came before people. Therefore, our Aina is our most oldest ancestor. On Moloka'i, we affectionately reference our land as Aina Kupuna. In the State of Hawaii archives under registered testimony, native testimony, fair foreign testimony of 1848 shows my Kupuna, Kupuhel, declares lands in the Ahupua Ahaino. He testifies, quote, I have always known these lands to be my Ohana. My ancestors' records show that we have lived on these lands since Bakahiko. Most likely than not, families that have lived within the same Ahupua for generations is Ohana. I'm um, kind of in favor of this bill um, and in redefining cultural descendant. Um, I think that if anyone who can prove their genealogy um, to that Ahupua should be recognized as a lineal descendant. Mahalo. Mahalo. Anyone else here for SB 2592? None members, any questions? Yeah, Vice Chair. Oh, Senator Hara? I yes. just want to note my uh, similar concern about yeah. um, requiring the department to change administrative mm -hmm. rules. But I wanted to follow up. Is there, for OHA, I guess, is there a way to, can we just put it in a statute? Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 yes, yes, we do it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, it's admin. Okay, it's yeah, so just put in the statute, statute as opposed to admin rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and then let the department decide so if they want to do admin like rules or not. Yeah, yeah, the government can veto it. Yeah, yeah. Other question, Vice Chair Pavel? Yeah, Laura. Sorry, you know, me and my staff work hard on the photo, so I got to ask the questions. <laughs> Cute. Uh, how does the Illinois establish the individual connections again to the land that they are not connecting through bloodline? Well, I mean, it's the same, it's the same for lineal descent and for cultural descent. I mean, the distinction that is made right now is a lineal descendant can can show genealogical evidence that they are related to a particular mm -hmm. set of remains. This is my, you know, my great grandfather, for example, and here's mm -hmm. my genealogy. Cultural descent is somebody who can say, my family is from this Ahupua, oh. or you know, or district, and then you know they have to they have to be able to provide mm -hmm. some evidence of that. But um, you know, I I don't think that's a burden, frankly. I mean, I think I, I think. As Kamakana said, that the bureau councils look at the evidence and make their decision, and I think, generally speaking, they are liberal. Okay. Uh, that, yeah, the last one is what, what is uh, the Illinois process for the um, handling individuals establishing rights to the land through use of royal patents? Well, you know. I don't know about DLNR. Shipti is not involved in that. Now, whether whether the Bureau of I guess, I guess you see, you see, you see, you, you, you more a little bit more Akamai Shifty. Yeah, there you go. So, so how how what it would be the what would be that? How would it be? Because right now, um, I've been here only since 2018, maybe five years or so. First day I in a building, somebody slapped some maps all over the ground showing me yeah. all these patent lands in, in my community in my Aupua and. It goes from Pulo <laughs> Nimitz to Black Rock and Nanakuli yeah. of, of Pulo and some other Hawaiian names. But I, I was just was wondering because they, the claims that they put in is, is very believable. I'm not saying I disproved the claims, but I just like, you know, what had happened to 
well, why was these Royal Patents lands, you know, true, you know, I'm gonna give them one Campbell estate, having the access to all these lands, because you know what they show in a way before, before, um, excuse me, or as I know, the, in, in, in Kapolei, Hawaiian homes. Mm -hmm. So they showed the original deed of owner. When he get his name, how is it possible? Maybe he registered, but how is it possible original deed of ownership when he came from Kauai? He was not even on Oahu. And that's the question that a lot of the Hawaiian homes that paying association fees are asking because he is the original of the owner. And I'm pretty sure he was not walking this earth when the Royal Patent and the Hawaiians was here, you know, because he was a little business owner in Kauai and, you know, ended up owning the mountain to the ocean. You know, who gave him the permission? I mean, that's the kind of stuff that they want to know. And I get a hard time finding him because I get one roadblock because his name comes up. So how, how, how can we so the, yeah. find out these things? Yes. Yeah, so, so you are you are asking me to go way outside of my oh, real sorry, expertise. I'm sorry. That's okay. Can you do but I will I can, I can tell you okay. that the Bureau oh, of Conveyances on. has the very first deeds from the you know the first time that the that the land deeds were registered, they are there going back to eighteen forty eight. The original documents wow. are in the safe in at Kalani Moko. So, I mean, I don't know how you access them because I have, I have no particular need to. But I mean, safe? that information is there. I mean, is it's it a real safe. I mean, these are right. these are both. I mean, they're they are both important land yes. records, but they are also, as you're saying, in, incredibly important historical documents. Yes. yes. Thank you. The safe might be old, so can easy get in. Huh? Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, sir. It's a question Appreciate for less. <laughs> Other questions? Thank okay, you. seeing none, thank you. And we'll move on now to SB 2653. This allows DHHL to assume historic preservation review. Um, so first up, we have DHHL with support. Thank you, DLNR also in support? Okay, great. Um, then we have um, the Maui Lanai um, Bail Council they are in support, Everett Dowling. Let's see. And then now we have oh, um, OHA with comments. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because this is just a good idea. It's just that we want to make sure DHHL has the right resources and efficient for qualified staff. And that they uh, have their own set of procedures to carry it out. And also, we had a suggested agent that for criteria, each site is served for the point of the OHA, which uh, the staff will be requiring. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have uh, Historic Hawaii Foundation opposition, Society for Hawaiian Archaeology in opposition, Ho'omanopono LLC in support, Lou Fabrito support, Cindy Freitas support, Foster Ampong opposition, Josephine Tanimoto support, um, Keo Mailani Hanapi Hirata with comments. Yeah, please come forward. Aloha ina kako, kia mei lani hana pihirata. So I'm here, I'm going to testify on SB um, 2653. I am not um, a homestead beneficiary. Um, as I testified earlier today, um, we are Kuleana landowners, I'm a descendant. Um, so I don't want to offend anybody, especially our Kanaka Maoli people, but I want to give comment and shed some light on some things that are happening on Molokai that this bill could potentially have a negative effect on. There's a project on the east end of Molokai in the Ahukua of Ualukue, and um, there's lands there that is under the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, and they um, have, there's a project that they're doing, which is the, it's called a Kuleana land project, where people live there, you know, kind of 100% off the grid. Mm -hmm. And so that land parcel is surrounded by Kuleana landowners. That land also came down. And it was a land swap way back when, in the previous. And so right now what is happening in East Molokai is that we have Hawaiians fighting against Hawaiians. 
Mm. Um, we have Kuleana landowners and descendants who come from those Ahupua'as who were given generational Kuleana. You know, my mother always raised us to say that we don't own the land, we are stewards of this land. This land will feed our people for generations to come. And so when we try to explain to the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, which essentially is a government entity, that we have real kuleana here. There's no water. There's only one well that feeds our whole east end of that island. And there's actually a cap on water meters. And then we're talking about putting our Hawaiian people back on the land. There really is that Kaumaha and Eha is super heavy. The last public meeting or two public meetings they had in person in the east end, that the Department of Hawaiian Homelands um, facilitated. Over a hundred people attended from East Molokai. And it was because it's so important for us to come forward and to share that we're not against getting our people back on the Aina, but it has to be in one way that is Pono. So I needed you folks to understand that this bill right here, which would give essentially the Department of Hawaiian Homelands full you know, control over to deal with historical properties, burial sites on their aina and stuff. Just keep in mind that the Department of Hawaiian Homelands is also a large developer. So that's all I have to say. Mahalo. Hey, thank you so much. Yes. Appreciate you being here. Um, um, Hannah and I in opposition, Wainani Traub and Peter Mills, both in opposition. Anyone else here for SB 2653? Any members, any questions? Oh, yes, Senator Ihara. Uh, let's see. I think Oha and Dylan are. Oops. I guess the AG is not here. There's no. I wanted to ask about um, potential conflict of interest. Um, is there, if there is a potential, let's say there's a development. So I, <clears throat> actually, if it's, um, when it gets into, different interests that where there's not a common ground, then it becomes political versus a common agreement. Um, and uh, that is my concern is that what happens in a situation where there's a development or some major development on the land and uh, Hawaiian homelands, um, uh, I guess the question is, what if there's a conflict of interest? I guess I'm not, neither of you are attorneys, I suppose. Um. Well, I, I, uh, I, I understand that a, a lot of the opposition to this bill comes from that, that, the idea of the conflict of interest. And, you know, I'm a state employee and, and my staff review state projects every day. Um, and the real question, and I think it's the question for the legislature as well as the governor is, how much distance is there between my staff and the agency that we're, you know, we're, that we're evaluating projects for, you know, and, and that, I mean, it's impossible for that to completely separate the two, you know, and, you know, how close, how close is too close? How far, you know, how far is, I'll far give you, enough? I'll give you an and example. I, yeah. So what if there was a decision made about whether to go ahead with a uh, development or not, and there's a dispute with, um, um, <clears throat> with linear descendants, others, cultural descendants. Um, <clears throat> I would feel more comfortable if there was a, um, a carve out where the attorney general or someone where there is a conflict, then you kick it into another um, more trust, you know, otherwise, whatever the decision is made, it may be blood, blood, no matter which way you decided, because of the process, because of distrust. So if we can have the decision made in a more trusting situation, where if there was, I'm not sure what the trigger is, maybe attorney general or someone to indicate that there's sufficient level of um, potential conflict that it, it goes to us a, a separate process or something. I'm not sure. Um, but the way it is now, I, I, I believe, if I read it right, is that um, the department is required, only the department. Let me ask you this. So right now, I think the bill says only the department. If this passes, uh, the Department of Hawaiian Home Homelands would have the authority. Right. It would, you know, essentially, the Department of Hawaiian Homelands would assume the responsibility for project review. Only them. Only. Right. So if there was a, so they, a situation where they are able to um, pass it back when there is 
um, a conflict, let's say, among the commissioners, even if they, if they, you know, if they're not of one mind, and you know, but some process where it can be uh, uh, not force them to decide when they're when, let's say, all of them believe there's a conflict, they're they're still forced to make a decision. So I, I'm thinking at some level of maybe they take a vote and then they get kicked back mm -hmm. and they don't have to make a decision. I don't know. That's yeah. just well, OHA is suggesting that we would keep the requirement that OHA be consulted. So if that would provide not, at least there's another, you know, um, body to. Right. Not, not only that, balance. but we're also making suggestions that they have they put a process in place uh, similar to, what, to the way that SHPD has rules. Right. I mean, there's been similar uh, bills put forth for the counties to take delegation from the SHPD, but there's a specific set process in there that says they have to carve out the rules. And so that's why we didn't go as far as saying they needed to do rulemaking, but there should be a process in place and your uh, your concerns could be inserted in there. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Thank you. Okay, then I think it goes right. to you. Okay. Yeah. We'll proceed then uh, with the uh, Committee on Water and Land and the Hawaiian Affairs uh, Committee with regards to SB 2165. And this is relating to historic preservation. This appropriates the funds to DLNR to inventory historic properties and burial sites in the state, collect data on burial site locations, and conduct an archaeological survey, surface survey. And members, if you read the measure, it does pretty much cover why we need this measure as well, um, and the assistance that uh, if we want these um, uh, decision, uh, these work that we have before us and the bills that we've been hearing, how can we um, allow, uh, afford to have uh, the chip D to do their work? And this is an appropriation bill, and they need assistance as well. And so. Um, having said that, um, we have communications from uh, Dr. Downer. The, uh, the department stands on its written comments, sure. written testimony. And you need resources. Always. Always. All right. Okay. Uh, Dumont uh, Manaole uh, sends communication in support as well. Historic Hawaii Foundation. Uh, in support, Tamatha Lutney, a Society for Hawaiian Archaeology, uh, in support. Um, Kyo, Kyo Mailani, you want to make comments? You want to come? Aloha. And I have to share with you, I have that exact lay. And <laughs> I was given, and I can't remember because this is, this was given to me when I was mayor. And I'm I, trying to remember who gave it to me. But I've used it a couple of times and it's in hiding somewhere. So I think I should bring it out again because it looks lovely on you. And I'm not sure, same kind of shouts. So Kukuina. So Kukuina comes from, this came from my Aina on Molokai. It's I all know. about light. Yeah, so but it's beautiful. Bring it out of the darkness. <laughs> and I have another one that's Opihi actually. Oh, yeah, same yeah, colors. yeah. Okay, proceed. Sorry. Um, Aloha Aina Kako. My name is Kelmelani Hanapihi Rata. Um, I want to testify in SB 2165. Um, I mahalo whoever came up with all of this. There's a lot in here, and I made a lot of notes on my stuff. But um, on Molokai, our oldest, um, our last historian, um, Kupuna Harriet Ne, back in 1985, did a video interview. And um, she said in the video interview, I'm going to summarize it, that we cannot stop progress. But what we can do is make sure they leave our culture and historical sites alone. And what that looks like for future generations, she was in one of the kupunas. Molokai, you know, we're very different and we are Wamokuliana on a different level. So our kupunas, we really listen to them. They never really told us, this is what you need to do. This is how they it was always educate us, come along with them and learn. And so she knew that we would live in a different time than they did. And so what that looks like now in this day and age, um, we struggle in um, knowing the balance and um, especially staying true to our cultural protocols. And so in this, this day and age, um, with a lot of development that is happening, 
Um, burial councils are not able to be fully staffed, but permits are still being issued. Grading, grubbing, building permits are still being issued. Um, SHPD, the State Historic Preservation Division, yes, they may be um, understaffed and overwhelmed, but they are the keeper of, they were created to make sure that our culture and history is never erased. And so for them to have not enough staffing or staffing who, or staff who really doesn't know their kuleana, like they have cultural historians. So cultural historian, what does that mean in that definition? They should be given more kuleana to Awamo and help okay. with in Can that. Can you uh, what? kind of summarize yeah. because we're running so, out of time. Um, Thank you. Anyway. We hear you. Cultural overlays and maps, GIS, Maui County, we're getting that together. We're part of Maui County, so Moloka'i is working on those types of things, and we believe in that. And so as the next generation, it is time for us to start having to have those maps and overlays. I would say that every island, because we all carry our own kuleana and mana, that we should be able to have our own repositories that have these places to keep all of our records on, and not just with SHPD. Mahalo. Okay. Mahalo. Anyone else wishes to speak um, on SB 2165? We have received uh, six continued six support communications, all in support from Tamara Malton, Cindy Freitas, Hannah Anai, Keone Shizuma, Wainani Traub, and we did have uh, Peter Mills all in in support. Um, is anyone else wishes to speak to SB 2165? Come forward. Hearing none, let's proceed with SB 2295, and this is relating to burial sites. Uh, this establishes an interdivision program with DLNR consisting of the State Historic Preservation Division, the Land Division, Office of Conservation and Coastal Lands, Island Burial Councils, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs that addresses the location movement and restoration of Hawaiian burial sites or EV exposed or likely to be exposed to coastal erosion. And this is an appropriation. And I would like to add to our discussions earlier about sea level rise. Uh, reason I did this bill, um, there was a picture and I'm not sure if you remember Dr. Downey, when I returned back here to the cap to the Senate in 2015, um, I, I'm not, it could have been that year, but there was a picture in the newspaper that showed the EV on a coastlands that was falling down. And I, it just hurt me at that time when I saw it. And I'm saying, you know what, it's going to happen. And um, I remember that clearly having that picture with me and it, I probably still have it. Um, but this is what this bill is about. Um, and also, um, uh, staff as well. I'd like to add Ahomoku in this as well, aside from the burial councils. And I just want to share with um, with uh, Kiyomai Lani, is that exactly what you said about what your kupuna said before? I've heard that from one of, I think it's your representative in Ahomoku before, um, when we confirmed them this past, last year. Um, same, similar um, guidance um, to all of us. So with that said, um, communications uh, with regards to SB 2295, Dr. Downing. Okay, thank you. Okay, Kamakana uh, Ferreira. Uh, Okay, thank you. So, you're supporting this measure? Okay, all right. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Tamara Luthi, Society for Hawaiian uh, Archaeology and Support. Um, Kiel Malani? I'll be back. I'll yes, um, um, yeah, you have, you have a minute to testify, yeah. so. We'd like okay. to hear from you so, anyway. Um, Aloha aina kako, keo rata for Moloka'i. Um, I support SB 2295. Um, I wanted to have, just make one comment um, that something should be changed on line five. It says, um, the interning the EV in a kapa or lauhala container. So if you can take out the word con container and replace it, what, what, we call or reference as Hina'i. Hina'i. 
Um, but that's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, excuse me. Come back again. Um, was that on the first page? Yes, first okay. page, line five. And then what? The, what was the recommendation? Um, to change the word container to what is what we reference when we kanu our EV back into the aina. Okay, and do uh, it's delete, a hinai. Yeah. So delete container and add what hinai. Okay, hinai. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank H you. H i n a e a. Yeah. Hina e. A e. H i n a e. A i. A i. H i n a i. H i n a i. Okay. Yes. All right. Mahalo. Mahalo. Thank you very much. I've heard that. Yeah. yeah. We we all learned something mm -hmm. new and important. Mm -hmm. uh, Tamara Palton in support. Cindy Freitas. Hannah Anai Wainani Trop and Peter Mills on this measure in support as well. Any uh, questions, members on SB twenty two ninety five? Hearing none. Um, we all go straight need, into decision making. We all the time. need to call our uh, our quorums around uh, as well. And so oh, yeah. uh, we're well, going we, into we decision making. Decision making. I need uh, one more. Yeah. Could we at least do the vote uh, sure. for Hawaii? Yeah. Okay. Sure. And then we can defer it. Okay. So we're going to go for the decision making. Yeah, but I still for... need mine because we got, I got yeah. a vote too on yours. Okay. Maybe okay. to Senator Kaloli to take the vote. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So starting with um, for the first four measures on this joint agenda, SP 2589, 2590, 2591, 2592. Charge recommendations, we're going to defer these until Tuesday, February 13, 101 p.m. in room 224. Um, these, these bills just need some more work. Um, so yeah, that's okay. We're going to defer till okay. Tuesday. Uh, so all of yours in the yeah the first okay. four yeah the first oh, four the first four okay. yeah defer till Tuesday February 13, 101 p.m. Room two two four. Is that it, Chair? Okay, let's wait until I I can't say anything until I have my staff see our calendar. Okay, mm -hmm. although you can do a different time. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but that's yeah. why I need no, him. I oh yeah, yeah, but oh, yeah, I do yeah, have yeah, to yeah, make yeah. announcements. Yeah. Yeah. What about the fifth? Are you deferring twenty six? No, I'm going to pass that one. I can want to please take the vote on that one at least then. So let's go. Let's, let's move on. Then let's let's pass this. So SB twenty six fifty three recommendation is to pass with the amendments suggested by OHA, and in the committee report, note that DHHL is encouraged to promulgate rules similar to Shipti. Summarize concerns raised by Keo Mailani Hanapi Hirata, Historic Hawaii Foundation and Society for Hawaiian Archaeology. Any discussion? See none then. Um, can Senator Keo Kololi for the vote for Hawaiian? Members voting on SB 2653. The chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Chair Shima Bokoro. Aye. Vice Chair Favela is excused. Senator Ihara. Uh, reservations. Reservations for Senator Ihara. Uh, I vote aye. Senator Richards. This is excused. Recommendation is, is adopted. No, pass with amendments from OHA. Yeah, OHA's amendments. Uh, I guess we could just roll. Uh, <coughs> okay, so now do you have quorum yeah. with Favela? Yeah, sure. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah I need okay. to. Okay, so I'm going to take the vote for 2653. Okay, um, one second. So the Committee on um, Water and Land for the first four um agenda items sb 2165 and 25 80, 24 i'm sorry 2589 and 2590 and 2591 2592 you're going to reschedule i mean you're defer. going to schedule defer for decision making on the 13th yeah um how about us the committee on water and land yes we can join them here. Yes. My okay. schedule is okay. Yeah. All, right. All right. Okay. For the committee on water and okay. land, we will also do decision making on the thirteenth February at one o one in room two two four two two four. Okay. And you want to take the vote for twenty six? Yeah. Did you take your vote I did. already? Okay. Committee's recommendation on SB twenty six fifty three is to uh, pass with the amendments. And these were on all his recommendations yeah. on amendments. Yeah. Uh, any discussion? Committee on Water and Land. Okay. Uh, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair goes aye. Okay. Chair's recommendation to pass SB 2653 with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Chang is excused. Senator McKelvey is excused. Senator Favela. No. Two one. Two one. Recommendation. 
recommendations adopted. Okay, thank you. Uh, with regards to SB 2165, and this is relating to historic preservation, um, Chair's recommendation on this measure is just to uh, pass with the amendment that defects the date to 2050. Uh, any discussions? So for the committee on that, you okay? Yep, yep, yep okay. fine. Uh, Water Land Committee, uh, any discussions? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the vote on SB 2165 with the amendment. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2165, noting the three members present on Water Land. Any no votes? Any votes with reservations? Hearing none, Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Okay. Hawaiian Affairs, same recommendation to pass with amendments. All right, uh, Chair Shubakuro. Aye. I vote aye. Senator Ihara. Aye. Senator Kehokalole. Aye. Representative Richards, excuse. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, thank you, members. SB 2295 relating to burial sites. Our uh, chair's recommendation is to pass uh, with the amendments. Um, two amendments will adopt DLNR's uh, amendments to delete page three lines 13 to 15. We'd like to make the change to one of the um, recommendations uh, on language mm -hmm. on the first page, line five uh, as well. And we'll change that. To oh, uh, we're going to delete the word container. Container to hinai. And yes, and we wow. want to add a homoku to um, to the program as well. We will yeah, and that's it. Two of the recommendations with amendments. Any discussions? Hearing none. Vice Chair for. Waterland Committee on SB 2295 with amendments. Chair goes aye. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2295 with amendments of the three members present on Waterland. Any no votes? Any votes with reservations? Hearing none, Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Okay. For Hawaiian Affairs and State recommendation, recommendation to pass with amendments. All right, all senators, um, excuse uh, for Senator Richards. Uh, any Reservations or nays? None. Motion passes. Okay. And sorry, I have one more. I got to take the vote just for Hawaiian. Okay. Um, SB 2650 from our previous agenda. Recommendation is to pass with amendments. We're going to blank out the appropriation and put the requested amount in the committee report. Um, any nay, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, then Vice Chair for the vote. SB 2650 with amendments. With amendments. All right. Um, Chair Shubakuru. Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Ihara. Aye. Senator Keo Kolole. Aye. Senator Richard is excused. All right, motion passed. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll see you Tuesday.